Dear brothers and sisters, the prayer is the spinal cord of one's faith. A salah is a vital act of worship in Islam. It is what distinguishes between faith and disbelief. The Prophet ﷺ said, العهد بيننا وبينهم الصلاة فمن تركها فقد كفر The pledge between us and them is to perform salah. Whoever abandons it has disbelieved. So it's a very important matter. And for men, performing it in congregation is a confirmed ritual in Islam. It is so important that Allah the Almighty did not exempt people from performing it in congregation even in the most scary situations and dangerous ones. And legislated for the Muslims what is known as Salatul Khawf, the prayer of fear. This is a prayer that is only performed during battles. When Muslims are fighting a battle, they perform Salatul Khawf, the prayer of fear. It's a congregational type of prayer. And it's different than the normal prayer. But the point here is, despite the dangerous situation a Muslim can be facing whilst fighting a battle, and for us to try to visualize and imagine how dangerous and serious the matter is. Just think differently. There were no tanks, aircrafts, and no, they were fighting on foot or on horses with swords, spears, and arrows. So simply pausing for a second causes you death because you're in continuous contact with the enemy. Yet, the Muslims were not exempted from praying in congregation. However, the very, and I say it's a very unfortunate phenomenon that is widespread amongst the Muslims is abandoning this ritual. Salatul Jama'ah, praying in congregation. Although, those who conveyed the faith, the righteous predecessors spoke about it and acted differently when it came to praying in congregation. Abu Hurairah said, It is better, it is easier for one to have his ears filled with melted lead. Someone to pour melting red lead into your ears is better for you and easier for you than hearing the call saying, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al falah, and you not responding. And you not going to the, pray, to the masjid and praying in the masjid. This is how serious the matter was for them. This was the rank of praying in congregation for them. Al-Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi said, they, the righteous predecessors, they used to condole one another for a full week, for seven days, if a single prayer in congregation was missed. You see how serious they took this matter. It's as if they lost a loved one. And it is indeed a loved matter to the hearts of the believers. 
As for their actions, Imam Muslim reports that Ibn Mas'ud describes the situation. Now we heard words. Let's see description of actions. Ibn Mas'ud said, a man would be brought into the masjid. This is number one. He couldn't, he couldn't come alone on his, on his own. Leaning on two men, unable to walk on his own again. Until he is placed in the row. Can you imagine the health situation of this person who has to be brought into the masjid, leaning on two people, being brought and put placed in the row so that he does not miss praying in congregation. Whilst Muslims look for any excuse, if there is an excuse, to miss praying in congregation and pray at home. For those who actually pray, some people don't even pray. They abandon the prayer altogether. But even those who pray, and you want to see how saddening the situation is, compare the salah, this prayer, to Salat al-Fajr when you prayed in the masjid this morning. Compare the numbers, you see how saddening and dreadful the situation is. So the Prophet ﷺ gave a stern warning against abandoning praying in congregation. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said, لَقَدْ هَمَمْتُ I was about to instruct a man to call the Adhan and then call for the Iqamah and instruct a man to lead people in prayer and then go to the homes of those who did not attend the prayer in congregation and burn them with their homes. And Imam al-Khattabi commenting on this narration said, It is not possible that praying in congregation is only a recommended matter. Because the Prophet ﷺ would not have given such a stern warning against abandoning an act of worship which is merely recommended and not mandatory. And to further warn against abandoning Salatul Jama'ah, the Prophet ﷺ said, as reported by Ibn Majah and classified as authentic by Al Albani, he said, وسلم, whoever hears the call for prayer and does not respond meaning does not come and pray in the masjid, then his prayer is not accepted unless he has a legitimate excuse. A legitimate excuse. al Mundri said, this narration indicates that the Prophet it says, as if that the Prophet said, anyone who prays on his own without the praying in congregation, without an excuse, his prayer is rejected. Do we have excuses? Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum, as in one of the narrations, and this is reported by Muslim, approached the Prophet ﷺ one day, and Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum was a blind man. He's a, a blind companion. He approached the Prophet ﷺ one day and he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Give me an excuse, exempt me from having to pray with the congregation. I live far and I don't have anyone leading me to the masjid. And Al Medina is filled with snakes and wild animals. Imagine a person having to walk a far distance, blind, with no one to guide him. In the description he gave to the Prophet, ﷺ, what would be the response? He said, you're exempted. And then the companion stood up, started to walk away. The Prophet ﷺ called him back. He said, come back. 
He said, can you hear the adhan? Can you hear, can you hear the call for the prayer? He said, indeed I can. Because see, when you live in an open area, sound travels a distance. He said, indeed I can. He said, then you must respond. Can this be something recommended? If anyone was to be exempted and given an excuse not to pray in congregation, it would have been this man, this blind companion, about whom the Prophet ﷺ had no doubts regarding his sincerity. Yet he said, no. If you can hear it, then you must respond. Ibn Mas'ud, and this is reported by an Imam Muslim, said few words that reflect what praying in congregation meant to the companions. And it makes it clear to us where we stand. He said, whoever is pleased to meet Allah tomorrow, meaning on the day of judgment, as a Muslim, then let him pray these prayers, the five daily prayers, where the call is made, meaning in the masjid. For indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has legislated for your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means and ways of guidance. And they are indeed amongst the means and ways of guidance. And if you were to pray in your homes, then you will be abandoning the sunnah of your prophet. And if you were to abandon the sunnah of your prophet, you will be misguided. And then he said, in conclusion, in our time, meaning the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he's addressing people after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, in our time, only people who were known to be hypocrites were the ones who would not attend the congregational prayer. The matter is serious. And we should attach great importance to it. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْمَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد الله عز وجل knowing the nature of mankind mandates things and then gives reward for those and prizes for those who fulfill. There are too many advantages and rewards and prizes for praying in congregation. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, one's prayer in congregation is 25 multiples of that when he prays in his house or in his shop. And if one performs wudu, leaves his house for no other reason but to pray in congregation, then with every step he makes, he's raised one rank and one sin is forgiven. What a great reward. That's why it was reported that many of the righteous companions, whenever they, they would walk to the masjid, they would shorten their steps. So if we assume that their step was half a meter, like a couple of feet or something, they would make it a foot at a time. Why? To make more steps and get more reward on that.
Another prize is what is reported by Imam at tirmidhi The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever prays in congregation 40 consecutive prayers, 40 consecutive days, not prayers, days, then he would be recorded as being free of two matters, free of hypocrisy and free from hell. So it ascertains your faith, it proves your faith, and it protects you from the fire of hell. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as sound by Al Albani. He said, ﷺ, whoever performs wudu and heads to the masjid for no other reason but to pray the, the obligatory prayer in congregation will receive the reward of a person who has performed Hajj. You want to perform Hajj and you didn't and couldn't? Well, this is the reward of Hajj facilitated for you. Again, in the book of Imam Ahmad, and classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet said, Whoever hears the call for prayer and goes and prays with the congregation, prays with the Imam in another narration, his sins will be forgiven. Isn't this what we work hard for? Isn't this the objective we are trying to achieve? To get our sins forgiven? to be protected from fire, to be admitted into Jannah? Aren't these all noble objectives we try to achieve to get salvation on the Day of Judgment? Well, it's available. It's facilitated. The matter is easy. All we have to do is just make a step and Allah will facilitate the rest. Aisha radiallahu anha used to describe the Prophet sallallahu and his conduct at home. She said he used to be serving his household members, but as soon as he would hear the adhan, he would walk out as if he doesn't know who we are. As if there's no relationship between him and them. Why? The call is from Allah. Hayya ala salah Hasten to prayer. Hayya al falah. Hasten to success. How can anyone hear this and not hasten and not rush? We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to cleanse our hearts, to purify our hearts, and enable us to hasten in response to His call. To the salah and to success. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni